the first year at Wat Dhamma Siddhi, in some ways, was very difficult, but in others it was pretty idyllic. I had the top of a mountain all to myself, with a few days when other people would invade my space. One time in particular, a group of people came from Bangkok, came up to where I was staying. It was a family. They'd met a John Fu and a Bamakut, and they wanted to come out and check out the monastery in Riyong. They got to where I was staying, and they sat down, and they commented on how peaceful and quiet it was. And then they pulled out a boombox and turned it on. I'm still talking about how peaceful and quiet it was. That's Bangkok. I complained to John Fu the next day, and he said, well, why did you listen? And my first reaction was I couldn't help but listen. There was the noise. But then as I got to know my mind better, I began to realize there are many levels going on in experience, many levels going on in your mind. It's like there are lots of different holograms here. And they're all inhabiting the same space, but they're on slightly different frequencies. And there's a question of which one you're going to tune into. Like today, we had more invaders of our space. And the first thing you have to think, of course, is that it's not our space. that they can be on their level. You can tune into that level, or you can tune into another level of your experience, which is right here as well. Look at what your mind is saying, how your mind is complaining, and ask yourself, is this helping in any way at all? And if the comments of the mind are not helping, tune them out. They can be there, but you don't have to get engaged with them. This is one of the major misunderstandings of meditation, is that you have to stop all the chatter in the mind before you can focus on the breath. But what are you going to use to stop the chatter unless you develop that focus? So you work on the focus and you let the chatter go. Tune in to the breath. And after a while, as you get tuned in more precisely, more solidly with the breath, you begin to tune out these other things. They may still be there, but you can tune them out. If you choose to pay attention to them, they're there. If you choose not to, they don't matter. So this ability to tune out disturbances outside is a good practice for learning how to tune out disturbances in your mind. There's a, there's a part of the mind that's constantly commenting on things, telling you what to focus on, where to pay attention, where not to pay attention. Telling you what you should be doing, telling you what you shouldn't be doing. And it's not the case that all the different voices in your mind are of the same opinion. But they all have the same values. So once you've made up your mind you're going to stay with the breath, you have to regard all these other voices as just interference. Because when you're tuning into a radio, radio station, other stations might slip in and out of phase, but regard them as interference. You don't want to get involved with them. You don't want to listen to them. And they can just go on chattering as much as they like, but you don't have to get involved. So try to develop this quality outside. There are lots of issues in the world that can get us all worked up. There are lots of problems out there. There's lots of things to straighten out. But as the Ajans keep saying, you can engage in the work of the world and it never gets done. 
no matter how much you straighten things out, there's always going to be more that needs straightening out. And sometimes the way you straighten something else out uh, can turn into another problem. You solve one problem and create another one in its place. So you've got to let all those loose ends just hang as you focus in here. And then as you're focusing in here, there will be some chatter. So you try to use that chatter to help the focus. Get the breath still, get the breath comfortable, get the mind at ease with the breath. And then there comes a stage where you have to let that chatter go as well. Just be with a sensation of the breath, and part of the mind is going to complain. This is stupid, you're not thinking, it'll say. And you basically have to say in response, I don't care, and then just drop it. Be with a sensation of the breath coming in, going out. This is called unification of awareness, when the awareness of the mind and the sensation of the breath seem to become one. This is an important stage in developing concentration, because this will carry you through all the levels of right concentration, starting with the second, and even on into some of the formless attainments. You let go of that sense of oneness only when you move on to the dimension of nothingness. So you want to cultivate this sense of oneness without commentary, without chatter. And again, the commentary may be there in the background, but you learn how to tune it out. I've mentioned before that there are times when I was staying in Wadasukhanam. And they had 14 different monks with a roster of, rotating roster of Dharma talks. And of the 14, maybe two could give really good Dharma talks. The rest became just noise. Irritating, too, because the Dharma talks were not especially inspiring. In the very beginning, I was trying my best to learn Thai, so I listened very carefully to every talk. And then I began to realize after a while, okay, this ability to listen to Thai has some disadvantages, because I can understand and take in bad Dharma talks in addition to the good ones that I wanted. So the next skill was learning how to un-understand things. In other words, each word could come, 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 and I was not going to connect it with the word before or the word after, even try to figure out what the word was. Now, dealing with a second language like that, that's easier than dealing with your, your native language, but it can be done. Like with this Dharma talk right now, you don't have to listen, you don't have to make sense out of this. Just let it be some of the noise in the background. You don't have to block it out. But you realize the fact that you're understanding what I'm saying here right now is part of your stitching things together. And you're doing the same thing with your own mind. There are thoughts in your mind that you're stitching together as well. You don't have to stitch them. You have to learn, unlearn that habit. And you find you can be at peace with a lot of things that otherwise you couldn't stand. And you learn how to turn this ability on and off. It's not like you're trying to become a zombie. Or have a frontal lobotomy. You're learning a skill that you will be able to turn off and on at will. And so right now, when you're with the breath, Allow the other bits and pieces in your mind that you would otherwise stitch in together into coherent conversations. Cut the stitches. Tune them out. Tune out everything that's not relevant to the breath. And even some things that are relevant to the breath, once they've done their work, let them go as well. Stay on the level of experience, where it's just awareness and breath. And don't slip off. Think of that image that the Buddha gives of the quail that's caught by the hawk. It's 
the quail is being carried off, it says, oh, my bad luck and lack of merit. If I hadn't wandered away from my ancestral territory, this hawk would have been no match for me. And the hawk says, well, it is your ancestral territory. And the quail says, a field with a clods of earth and stones all turned up. So the hawk lets him go. He says, okay, go there. But even there you won't escape me. So the quail goes down and stands on one of the stones and starts taunting the hawk. Come and get me, come and get me, you hawk. And the hawk folds its wings and plunges down, swoops down on the quail. And as the quail sees, okay, the hawk is coming at full speed, it hides behind the stone. And the hawk shatters its breast right there. But I don't recommend that you taunt all the different voices in your, in your head. But if you stay just with the sensation of the breath coming in and out, where the sense of awareness and the breath are one, tune into that. That's your ancestral territory. Every other level of your mind right now, all the other holographs, all the other conversations, those, and when you get involved with those, you're wandering away from your ancestral territory, and you're not safe. The hawk can catch you. So try to develop this skill. It's a very useful one to have in your arsenal. It frees you from a lot of the entanglements of the world. <laughs>